Hello guys, welcome to Made Bits Made Simple. In today's video, we are going to see about cliff flip and cliff pallet. Before starting, I would like to let you know about our new video on Takayasu Arthritis on our 2 minute doc channel. You can learn about this condition in just 2 minutes by watching this video. So make sure to check out this video too. The link will be in the description. So in this video, we are going to see about cliff flip and palate under the following headings. First, we will talk about the embryology and related surgical anatomy, then the types of cleft lip and cleft palate, and their incidence and etiology, clinical features, initial management, surgery and its principles, and uh, the necessary steps which are done beyond cleft lip or cleft palate correction. Let's talk about the embryology first. At about 5 weeks of gestation, a structure called nasal placode will get will get converted into nasal pit and around the nasal pit two processes will form uh, the one which is medial is called medial nasal process and the one which is lateral is called lateral nasal process and along with that there will be two other eminences maxillary eminence and mandibular eminence the two medial nasal process starts to grow towards the midline and fuse medially so it forms a single fused medial nasal process whereas the two lateral nasal processes remain unfused. Now what happens is that the fused medial nasal process which is represented in green color in this picture will fuse with the maxillary eminence which is represented in yellow color in this picture and they both together forms the upper lip whereas the two lateral nasal processes which are represented in red color in this picture will actually form the ella of nose. Now let's talk about the embryology, a formation of the palate. So the formation of hard palate is from two structures, namely primary palate and secondary palate. Uh, anteriorly, the primary palate is formed and from the two sides, there will be uh, shelf-like projections, which are called as secondary palate. These three structures are going to fuse. Uh, I mean the primary palate and the secondary palate from both sides are going to fuse the junction where the primary palate and the two side uh, the sec secondary palate from two sides meet has a foramen which is called as incisive foramen now we've seen about the embryology of the upper lip and the hard palate now if there is any defect in the processes which has taken place in their formation cleft lip and cleft palate can occur now Cleft lip and cleft palate can be uh, seen in 1 per 600 live births and it can be classified as uh, presence of cleft lip alone or cleft lip and cleft palate together which is the most common type or in some patients there can be cleft palate alone. Usually this is more common in males. Now let's see about the types of cleft lip. Now in the first picture you see a normal lip which is formed normally. In the second picture, you can see that there is unilateral cleft lip means there is cleft lip on one side alone. That is because there is defect in the fusion of the maxillary eminence with the medial nasal process on one side alone leading to unilateral cleft lip. Whereas in bilateral cleft lip, what happens is that there is defect in the fusion of medial nasal process with the maxillary eminence on both the sides leading to cleft lip on both the sides. Now it can also be classified as a simple and compound cleft lip that is based on the inv involvement of alveolus along with uh, the cleft lip. Alveolus is nothing but the tooth socket. If the tooth socket or the alveolus is also involved it is called as compound type of cleft lip whereas if it is not involved it is called as a simple type of cleft lip. Now let us see about the types of cleft palate. In the first picture you can see normal cleft normal palate without any cleft okay and in the second picture you can see that the cleft is extending towards one side that is because there is defect in the fusion of uh, the primary and secondary palate on one side alone whereas if there is defect in the fusion of the of both the secondary palates of the both sides and with the primary palate we can have bilateral uh, cleft palate as we told already that can be uh, cleft lip and cleft palate which can be coexistent in most of the cases that is what we see in the first picture in second row which is marked as unilateral cleft lip and anterior palate 
where there is a cliff clip along with cliff pallet okay uh, and in the uh, second picture in second row you see that there is bilateral cliff clip and uh, cliff pallet which means that is defect in both the sides leading to bilateral defect and in the last picture you can see that uh, uh, there is bilateral cleft lip and complete cleft palate because uh, here there is a uh, defect in the fusion of uh, all the structures involved in the formation of hard palate we have seen that for the formation of hard palate there has to be fusion between primary palate and secondary palate from both the sides so there are three structures involved in the fusion so if there is defect in total uh, com if there is complete defect in the fusion of the uh, palate processes the primary palate and secondary palate there can be complete cleft palate okay so these can these are the classification of cleft lip and cleft palate now about the etiology or causes if a child has family history of cleft lip or cleft palate it has got higher chances of developing a cleft lip or cleft palate so there has been positive uh, correlation history if there is positive family history and if the if there is history of some drug intake by the mother of the child during pregnancy such as anti-epileptics like phenytoin or steroids there is slightly increased risk for the development of cleft lip or cleft palate and it is also be found that there is association of cleft lip or palate with syndromes like pierre robin syndrome down syndrome and preacher collins syndrome the clinical features are the following the child can have feeding difficulties speech problems and dentition defects like supernumerary teeth delayed eruption or dental malocclusion the dental uh, these uh, the, the clinical features are more pronounced if the child has coexistent cleft palate initial management of the child is usually focused on improving the nutrition of the child as we told that there are feeding difficulties so there are special devices like special nipple and bottle feeder with one way valve which are very helpful in cleft palate okay so the nutrition has to be addressed first and then in certain cases of cleft palate which often are coexistent with syndromes like we saw previously are known to have uh, airway airway difficulties in certain cases and they might require securing of airway and once the initial requirements like the nutrition and airway has been established before uh, taking the child for surgery pre-surgical infant orthopedics abbreviated as PSIO it is done with naso alveolar molding what we do, do here is that you see a device in the center this will be inserted into the cleft which is seen in the lip okay so this will be inserted in the cleft and then it will be taped and secured there in position what happens is that the tissue growth will happen around uh, this nasal alveolar molding and this leads to narrowing of the cleft which means the cleft becomes smaller in size compared to how it was before okay so when the child is going to be taken up for surgery it will be comparatively easier now there's a criteria for surgical repair which is called as Miller criteria for surgical repair it is also called as rule of 10 for cleft lip uh, the child should be minimum 10 pounds in weight and minimum 10 weeks old and HB should be 10 gram percent whereas in cleft palate the weight and hemoglobin is same for as for cleft lip the child should be 10 pounds in weight and minimum 10 gram percent hemoglobin should be there but the age limit for cleft palate is that the child should be minimum 10 months old so that is the difference between cleft lip and cleft palate uh, when it comes to millet criteria for surgical repair this is the minimum criteria which has to be made uh, for which, uh, after which the surgery uh, can be done for the child now let us see about the timing for uh, surgical repair of cleft lip and cleft palate if the child only has cleft lip alone the child can be taken up for surgery at five to six months of age if the child has cleft palate alone and if it is a defect in soft palate alone it can be taken at six months for surgery or if the defect is at hard palate alone can be taken for uh, surgery at 15 to 18 months whereas if the child has both soft palate and hard palate defect two-stage surgery can be done 
where the soft palate is corrected at 6 months and then the hard palate is corrected at 15 to 18 months. Now if the child has coexistent cleft lip and cleft palate, two operations have to be done. First the cleft lip and soft palate are corrected first at 5 to 6 months of age and then the hard palate is corrected at 15 to 18 months of age. So there will be two stages at which the corrections are done. Now what are the goals for the surgery uh, for these patients? The main goal is to achieve the normal appearance of lips, nose and palate and this helps to restore the cosmetic appearance of the child and along with that in the process we are also going to achieve the normal function normal functions such as speech, feeding and dentition. Okay, So we are going to be improving the cosmetic appearance as well as the normal function of the child by corrective surgeries. Now there are certain principles involved in cleft lip surgery. We just have to know about the principles of the surgeries and the names of the surgery more than knowing about the procedure in of each surgery. So in cleft lip surgery initially we'll be doing skin incisions and then we'll try to align the displaced tissues like cartilages and uh, the muscles underneath and that we're going to achieve muscular continuity by suturing the displaced muscles to the nearby bones uh, and thereby sealing the defect uh, which is the cleft which is present here and we are also going to uh, suture the horizontal fibers of orbicularis oris and by doing so we are going to achieve a functioning oral sphincter in this child regarding principles of cleft palate surgery if, we, if there is defect in soft palate, we, ha we have to reconstruct the soft palate musculature and, we, and then we have to do closure of hard palate cleft which is done at a later stage at 15 to 18 months as we saw already. This is a two stage procedure. The main principle involved in cleft palate surgery is that we have to minimize the amount of dissection as much as possible because if you are minimizing the dis dissection as much as possible, there will be minimal scar formation and there will be better results. Uh, for the child. Now let us see about the names of various surgeries for cleft lip and cleft palate. For cleft lip uh, we can do Millard repair or tenons and Z-plasty. For cleft palate we can do Wardell Kilner repair, Von, Von Langenbach repair, Follow palatoplasty which is also called as Z-plasty technique. There are uh, some things which are beyond uh, the correction of the defect of the cleft lip and cleft palate alone. Okay, so. Uh, first, let's talk about hearing in these children. There is increased risk of otitis media in these children and otitis media is infection of middle ear. And along with that, there can be increased risk of conductive hearing loss as well as sensory neural hearing loss in these children. So it is necessary or compulsory for these children to undergo screening for hearing loss with BERA and BERA is brainstem evoke response audiometry. and Tympanometry is another procedure which is done for uh, conductive hearing loss. It is compulsory for these children to undergo these tests before one year of age and then routine follow-up is being done and these tests are done in routine intervals to diagnose any underlying hearing loss at the earlier stage. And as I told already, these children will have speech defects. So speech assessment is done as early as 18 months in these children and it is also repeated at regular intervals to identify any defect at the earliest stage. Speech defects can be because of velopharyngeal insufficiency and this can lead to increased hypernasal speech um, and then uh, these children can also uh, have defects in problems in articulation. Okay, So these are the causes for speech defects and this can be addressed by speech therapy and the parallel surgery which we are going to do uh, the hard palate surgery which you're going to do at 15 to 18 months and the soft palate surgery which you're going to do at around 6 months uh, the palate surgeries can also uh, help to address uh, the speech defects in most of the cases and in certain cases speech training devices can also be tried now about the dentition there can be various dental anomalies in these children like uh, supernumerary teeth dental malocclusion it is very essential for, uh, to maintain good dentition in these children. That is because uh, at the later stage, after the correction of the cleft lip and cleft palate, we can address the uh, defect in the dentition with the help of orthodontic treatment. Okay, so if 
a, a major prerequisite or essential criteria for orthodontic treatment is good dentition so in order to achieve that good dentition is maintained in these children so that at later stage after the correction of cleft lip and palate orthodontic treatment can be provided and there can be a better dentition for these children you guys have been asking me about the lecture slides for uh, most of my previous videos so uh, th uh, I'm making sure that uh, the lecture slide for this one is available for sure and the link will be in the description of this video so you can uh, check it out and download it and use it for uh, reference and uh, to revise whatever you have watched in this video and the references for this video will be uh, mentioned in the description as well uh, so you can check those books uh, if you're someone who needs uh, study with me sessions to focus and study you can consider my channel called study with Tony where you can listen to lo-fi music and do focus to study session and if you are someone who's thinking about uh, beginning crypto uh, consider using the link which is in the description if you use that uh, you will get rupees hundred worth of ethereum uh, coins Thank you so much for watching this video till the end. I hope you learned something new. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button, share this video to your friends and groups so that they'll get benefited as well. And hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you won't miss out any of my upcoming videos as soon as I upload them. And many more videos are on the way. So make sure to subscribe so that you won't miss them out. And meanwhile, uh, you can watch the other videos which are visible on the screen right here now. Okay. Thank you so much once again for watching this video till the end. I'll see you guys in my next video.